the comic book world, the job of saving the planet falls to that iconic character, the superhero, an invention of American pop culture. But now a new gang of heroes with roots in the Arab world is here, and their arrival signals the start of a radical new era for comics, fighting evil Islam style. You know, no one's ever done this with Islamic content. See, Muslims believe that power is the power of Allah. And Allah has 99 attributes. With 99 heroes from 99 countries, each with an attribute of Allah, this new alliance of cultures has another long-term mission. According to their creator, Kuwaiti psychologist Naif al-Mutawa, they're also here to wrestle back Islam from the extremists who seek to control it. I mean, the people who are kind of embroiled in this kind of whole war and religion stuff, you can't speak to them. So you make them speak to you. You know, you create your own universe where it's your language they have to adapt to. Now, in a bid to take the middle ground of the cartoon world, some of America's leading comic editors are helping the 99 on their way, hoping to attract a new market for comics. Our, our stated goal is to make um, entertainment that appeals to um, cultures that are not traditionally catered to. If I have to make a woman not be, you know, look trashy, well, great, you know, it's more power to, to us, you know, I think that's great. While its heroes are drawn from a variety of religious and cultural backgrounds, the values of Islam are woven throughout. The 99 is a clear reference to the Quran. And from Saudi Arabia to Indonesia and the United States, stereotypes about the world's fastest growing religion are being challenged. I knew that you know, to go after the Superman, Batman, Spider-Man space, I couldn't just have you know, love and kindness and mercy. Right? And the nice thing about the 99 attributes of Allah is that there's a yin and yang aspect. There's the powerful, the hegemonist, the destroyer. There's also the kind, the generous, the merciful. And so what I've done is, is two of the four characters that we launched with you know, were the strong one, Jabbar, and Mumita, who's the destroyer, who's a woman. The, the territory that he is treading in is very, very dangerous for him personally. What do, you, what, what do you mean by that? Well, I mean, it, clearly the mocking of Islam, uh, the use of cartoons, uh, the use of the names of Allah for uh, cartoon characters is something which, which hits the very basis of our belief. While the 99 are aimed at loosening up Islam's image, in Britain, Anjum Chowdhury is leading a charge to strictly enforce its fundamentalist values by successfully establishing a system of Sharia courts throughout the UK. This is the territory where the Muslims will never tread because of the complete difference between our culture and the Western culture. We can see that idols, music, uh, you know, drawing, uh, you know, acting is part of the Western culture. This is not part of our culture. Although we have calligraphy, we cannot draw human beings, we cannot draw animals, and plus we do not fabricate stories. And we certainly don't twist history in order to fit a certain agenda, which this individual knife is trying to do. In New York, where the 99's production hub has been established, the objections of fundamentalists are being politely brushed aside. We're definitely trying to export some of the, um, some of the form and the fun of comics to this culture without exporting necessarily American values in any, in any oppressive way. Stuart Moore is one of America's most respected comic book writers. He's now using those skills to write narratives for the 99, excited about the potential to bring about widespread Muslim acceptance of a traditionally gritty American genre. I like the idea of reaching out to children in countries that either haven't seen, haven't seen comics much before or haven't seen enough people from other, from other cultures and just sort of letting them know that other people around the world are like them. Because the whole point of the way the 99's powers work is that individually each of them has a gemstone that allows them to lift things or to project light 
or to be very strong. But when they really gain their strength and when they're most effective is when they join together in groups of three. Um, and that's part of the whole metaphor for cooperation among, among different cultures. Because I didn't want to be the Kuwaiti who got Kuwaiti investors, set up a Kuwaiti company and launch a Kuwaiti here. I mean, that's just too cheesy, as the Americans would say. While Naif is proud of breaking the grip of Judeo-Christian superheroes in the cartoon world, he's mindful, he says, of not overplaying the Islamic hand. But we have a Saudi character, Indonesian, French, British, American, uh, we, uh, Iranian, Jordanian, uh, Chinese, but the Chinese one has not been used yet, one from Yemen, um, we have one from Qatar, uh, we have one from Egypt, one from Turkey. Although it's not an exclusively Islamic cartoon, it does appear to be forging a revolutionary path by rebranding Islam shunning its often strict fundamentalist image and repackaging the religion as a kind of pop culture. When you focus on religious behavior, then you start segmenting and you become a market of one. But when you talk about religious values, I mean, when you think about the, the 99 and the 99 attributes of Allah in the Quran, things like generosity and wisdom and mercy, these are human values. And we've been able to do with no budget you know, what the Ministries of Information of all the Islamic world has spent billions of dollars doing. Not each comic book is deep into archetypes. That's the overarching archetype. Um, now, I, you know, every time I get a script where the scene takes place in a bar, I change it to a cafe. You know, Although some like have that. dismissed the cartoon's surging popularity as a commercial stunt, academics aren't so sure. Intrigued by its capacity to affect deep impact on a generation of young Muslims, Experts like this group of Fulbright scholars in New York have sought out Al Mutawa to quiz him about the cartoon's characters and storylines. What kind of impact is, you know, this obviously this cross-cultural problem solving is going on here and what are your goals there? You know, just because, for example, you know, the strong one is from Saudi today, it, it might, that might be the Indian one in two years. So that stone will pass. America spawned the world's first comic heroes, and it was here that Naif was drawn into their imaginary world, having been sent here for summer holidays. But his obsession about giving Islam a 21st century cross-cultural makeover was sparked at home in the Gulf, where Islamic censors in Kuwait banned one of his favourite books, the George Orwell classic Animal Farm. The book was banned in the Soviet Union. Meanwhile, in my neck of the desert, it was banned because there was a pig on the cover. I mean, there wasn't even any thought given to kind of looking at the actual content. And now, 30 years later, my son was made to take out a pen in school and take out the word pig uh, from, a, from, from his reader as if pigs don't exist. Naif says it's the strict system of censorship that exists in Kuwait and other Islamic societies that remains a key motivator to his Islamic comic quest. It worries me that the, the people who have that type of mentality uh, are censoring uh, the content. And so the only way to kind of really make a difference uh, is to offer content uh, that stays true to what I see uh, children should be growing up with, but done in a way that can't be dismissed as coming from the outside. What makes the Islamic cartoon project especially unusual is its almost entirely un-Islamic creative team. Most of them veterans of an American comic art form which thrived on graphic depictions of gratuitous sex and violence. We have to have action and it is a very fine line between violence and action and we cross it all the time and my job is to catch it when that happens. With almost two decades with the cartoon industry giant Marvel Comics, Marie Jarvins knows the genre backwards. This is the kind of underwear you wear in a coloring book. But as the 99's chief editor, she's facing a brand new set of challenges. It's complicated because really what, what you're really looking for is action, not violence. It is a visual medium. Things have to happen. Uh, you know, you have to have a credible threat to the team 
And if you don't have a credible threat, you have no story. Abandoning the traditional violence common to Western comics, Marie has turned to actual world events, often natural disasters, as a way of injecting some drama and action into the plot. We have them help rebuild dams in Afghanistan and clean out landmines in Cambodia. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do when I run out of international emergencies, but I assume there will always be more. Inked and with letters, which I'm currently correcting. You can sort of see where I'm drawing all over it. So this is the initial... As she studies each impending issue with a fine tooth comb, Marie has to look through the glasses of a conservative Islamic censor in order to ensure that there'll be no trouble ahead. This is a copy of a page where I thought that our main character was too curvy. Okay, so what you can see is where I put an orange thing on her back, which is just, it's just too hot for our comics, which are aimed at children in places like Saudi Arabia. And so we've got, that's not good enough. We changed it a little bit, and this is the, the final product right here. The attempt to export the comic book genre into the Islamic world appears to be working, with censors in countries like Saudi Arabia granting their approval. Not only is it proving to be a commercial success, but it's already generating scores of related ventures, like this theme park in Kuwait based on the 99's characters, and an animated series by the TV giant that produces Big Brother, Endemol. For Naif, it's an important and historic step he hopes will have a lasting impact. But trouble is brewing fast, and Islam's fundamentalists are now seizing upon the 99 as evidence that its strict Sharia code must be urgently and universally accepted before young Muslims are brainwashed. We need to really work hard to implement the Sharia because ultimately it's only by having an Islamic state and having Islamic judges that individuals like this will never be able to propagate what they are doing within society. As fundamentalists press ahead with their hardline world, Naif is content to continue building his imaginary one. And although it presents certain risks to his own safety, he believes that it's far more important than an archaic interpretation of what he still regards as God's word. In the end, this has my name on it. And, you know, I've been the one that's kind of been out there walking that fine line, getting it to where it's at. And it can very easily be taken, and, 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 and with good intentions, can be taken in directions that, you know, would compromise me or my family. I think the only judge of any of us should be God. Thank you.